Alright guys, so I had shown you last time how to instantiate a prefab, but now what I really want to do is I actually want to show you how to give that prefab a velocity. So you could use transform or you could use rigid bodies. If you're using a transform, uh, I would just say, you know, you could attach it directly to the object itself that you're instantiating, the prefab itself, or you could just add a line of code like this in. Which is I have the prefab name, if we're using rigid bodies, prefab name dot rigid body dot velocity equals, and then again recall that uh, we're making a new vector two here. In that last video, Unity Tutorial 5, I believe, I was telling you at the end you need to make new vectors when you want to move something. And the same applies here. Now if you'll notice there's two arguments here for a vector two, three arguments for a vector three. That's just 2D, 3D, this is X, this is Y. Um, that's really all I want to say about that. Oh, and, uh, if you do your prefab dot name equals whatever, then your instance gets that name. So, that's just a cool thing. And game object dot destroy, uh, the object you want destroyed, the time you want it destroyed in. Uh, that's, that's really useful just because, you know, to destroy objects and bolts and stuff, so they're not continuously floating in the game space, clogging up the engine. And, you know, just some basic, I guess, mistakes people make. They forget to define variables up here. They forget to initialize the variables. Uh, they make the wrong type of variable. With floating points, they forget to put an F up here. Um, you know, just remember, if you're doing an update function, it's updating every frame, so to define variables in there, it's a little silly. You can see I did it here for bullet instance, but notice I'm instantiating this each time the player presses something, which is why it's done in here, and notice it's done inside of an if statement. So, the game engine is not continuously doing this. It's based on player input. The game engine is continuously checking for that input. And only when the player gives it that input will it go on to create this object. And that's all I want to say about that. Public game object bullet made it public because um, this way other scripts and other classes could refer to it. Player health. Okay, now we're getting into some interesting stuff here. So, we have... This, this is just referring to shader, uh, you know, the material thing that's just tied into the shader. I really want to get, what I want to get right into is, you know, max life and current life we have settings for. Then we have a health fractal, which again is part of the shader. Uh, I really, what I did was I set up a, a whole level system here, level 1 two, through 6. And basically, here's how you could really, if you're trying to make a multi-level game, this is a really quick and easy way to, to let your health... Uh, to, to really carry over your health. I believe we reset it each time. So I'm not too sure if this was still necessary. But just to. This could be implemented in a variety of ways. You know there's a number of uses for this one implementation. As you can see here. The level settings are boolean variables. So this is true for anything. You know whether you want to check you know. An item on that level. Uh, if the player's on that level. So you could you know instantiate a monster to the screen. It's so important to have a state system, and instead of just having this whole, you know, state machine and, and coding a bunch of scripts for that, I built the state machine actually into the scripts. So, these level things, we set all in the force of level 1 to true, then, you know, if current scene, uh, if current life is less than or equal to zero, we destroy the game object and we're going to load the game over scene. If they get, if uh, you're hitting the space, because I said the health is tied into the shot, so if we're shooting... We're subtracting from the health that's just tied into our game mechanic. That's just, uh, this stuff over here, these two lines just some shader nonsense. Void, on trigger, enter, collide, or other. So, once that collision takes place, if the object tag is enemy, so obviously right here we have player health. When our player, this is attached to a player object, if we collide with an enemy, is what this is basically saying, with a tag of enemy, which I'll show you tags in a later video, we're subtracting from our life, and this is just for testing purposes, debug.log hit. Could have really removed that, could comment that out. If other.gameobject.tag wall, and then you just boolean checks if you're on this level. And that's why I had those booleans. It's not so much to carry over the health. It's more to check what scene we're going to load if we die. So, uh, basically we have our if, else, if chain here, or ladder, whatever you want to call it. Uh, if other.gameobject.tag wall, if we hit into a wall. Because remember on those mazes, um, it would reset us at the start of the level. Well, here's how you check... If you're at the start of the level, you basically just have all these load levels here. And we're running out of time. Um, yes, yeah, so just wall two I made. And then, okay, if level, else if level three, yeah.